Hi guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com. So today we're doing episode two for live lessons. And what's really cool about this episode is that I wanted to talk about something that a lot of beginner and intermediate players kind of don't think about. So I teach a lot of in-person lessons and I've taught for 10 years coming up now. And one thing I want to um, really bring to your attention, and it'll be a conscious effort when you're thinking about playing. Um, if you have any bad habits that you've picked up along the way, this lesson will hopefully help correct um, any mistakes that you're doing with your left hand and help you play at um, a more efficient rate. So the first thing that I want to talk about for your left hand form is actually how to hold the ukulele. So a lot of times when I'm watching people play, they're going to play like this. And you can see where my neck is, right? You can see how it's like all the way down, kind of where my leg is. And sometimes people like to rest their, their left arm on their leg as well. So we're going to talk about how to hold this instrument the best way uh, that you can. So the first thing is we can see the back of it is just right here. I'm going to take this back of the ukulele and I'm going to put it on my side, on my right side. So all I'm going to do is just stick it right there. And with my forearm, this part right here, I'm going to put it on the side of the body. So this way I have some support and this is going to help keep this ukulele in place. And the very tip of it right here is just going to be resting on my highest part of my thigh. So you can see how I have this ukulele's body angled up, right? And same with the neck is that it's going to point this way. And now is when my left hand can help hold it in this position. So on the website and the songs that you're learning involves you jumping around from here to here to here, wherever. And the best way to keep this ukulele steady so that when you're playing around, you know, anywhere throughout the neck without it moving, you know, something like that, right? I just played all throughout the neck, but you saw that the body didn't move at all, right? So the best way to do that is to work on the um, holding the ukulele correctly, right? So that's the first thing that comes uh, to mind for importance for your left hand. Now, the next thing for your left hand form is that I've written uh, a few suggestions for you, right? There's a few forms that I actually do for um, making a proper... Uh, left hand form. So I'm just going to break it down and talk about form one first. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, how to make the basic C chord shape. So if you're not familiar with it, it's just your third finger on the first string of the third fret. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take our ring finger, put it right there, and we're going to start with form one. So I'm going to turn sideways so you guys can see what's happening with my left hand now. So take a look at my thumb. My thumb is going to be right slightly above the middle of the neck, right? If, imagine if there was a line going down the middle of this neck. And if my thumb goes slightly above it, right? And you can see this giant U-shaped gap that I've got. Now, this is really important because a lot of people always tend to hug the neck. So here's one thing you don't want to do. You really don't want to hug the neck. Um, there's a few specific things that you'll play later on that involve hugging the neck, but for right now, we're going to ignore doing that. So I want you to copy this. You're going to take your thumb, put it slightly above the middle, and you're going to have this big U-shaped gap right here, and we still have our ring finger for that C chord. So the other thing is, take a look at these fingers. They're going to be floating above the neck, and our pinky finger is just naturally going to curve inward. So with our first and our second finger floating above, they're also going to be curved. So you don't want to keep your fingers straight or you definitely don't want to hide them under the neck. So now we've got form one learned. Okay. 
okay? And form one and form three. Form three is talking about bar chords. They're almost the same. So we're going to talk about form one and three right now. But for form one, we have this perfect U-shaped gap. And if we tie it to, let's say, a bar chord, let's play a D7. And we turn back this way. Take a look at the difference. It's basically the same shape, right? So if we have form three, form one, and I go to form three, the only difference is that I'm actually barring uh, with my index finger for a bar chord. So this shape right here, if you're thinking, what am I gonna use this shape for? Most of the time it's gonna be used for bar chord playing and playing out from bar chords. So if I just play a little melody line out of that D7, that's what it looks like from the front. And if I turn sideways, here's the benefit of playing form one, is that with my index finger barred straight in this U-shaped gap, my thumb's applying enough pressure to the back of the neck while my index finger's applying pressure this way, right? Think of it as like a clothespin. That's what I wrote about in this article. To open a clothespin, you have to push together equally on both sides. And when you push together equally, that allows it to open, right? It's the same concept as this. If your thumb is back here and you're trying to make a bar chord, you can hear how bad it sounds, right? There's not enough force and not enough pressure to make that chord ring out perfectly, right? So form one and form three interchangeably help with playing bar chords, but they also help with playing chords that require maybe a bit of a stretch, right? So if I was to make this higher voicing of a G chord, let's go ahead and learn it real quick. So take your third finger, put it on the seventh fret of string three, and your pinky's on the seventh fret of string two, and your index finger's on the fifth fret of string one, and our fourth string's open. So take a look at this. This one's got the same shape as form one, and it's got that big U-shaped gap. And the beauty in this is that if I was to play after it, any kind of single notes, I can stay in this shape. So what it comes down to really in your playing is figuring out what you're doing and what form works the best. So form one, um, let's give you a real world example with that chord. I did la bamba, which is like. Right, sounds like that. So check it out. If I go to that higher voicing of G, You can see that I'm going to stay in this shape right here. So you see that I stay in the same form one, so that way I can reach these next notes with ease, right? So that's basically form one is just keeping a U-shaped gap um, and keeping your thumb kind of planted towards the middle. Now, most of the time, you're going to be playing with what I call form two, and form two is is Basically, think of it as a standard form. It's the one that you use for everything. All right, so all that's form two, and you're sitting there going, okay, what did he do? <laughs> Here's the beauty in form two, is that it's actually probably the easiest one to do. Um, here's the difference. If I make that C chord again, instead of having this big gap right here, I'm going to take my index finger. I'm going to rest it against the back of the ukulele's neck. So if this index finger is touching right here, think about how most of the support for holding this neck up is going to be with my first finger. See, if I let go of my hand and I'm just keeping the body like that, it rests all of the weight against this part of my index finger. So earlier I played some kind of lick like... Um, that where I was moving from here to there or there to here throughout the entire neck 
the best way to do something like that when you're playing throughout the neck, like a lick like that, is to actually rest your index finger on the bottom. So that way you can kind of think of it as like sliding up and down, right? So this holds my neck in place. Right? That way, if, if you were to play form one, it's so much harder. Like I struggle to hold the body up playing that same lick, right? But if I do like this, I can put all my attention on what my left hand and right hand fingers are actually playing instead of trying to pay attention on holding this body up, right? So when I talk about all these forms, it really depends on the context of your playing, right? If you're jumping around a lot, form two is going to be the best one to do. And most of the time, form two is the best one, uh, is the best choice. So again, let's take that basic C chord. And all we're going to do is go ahead and take that ring finger, put it back on the third fret string one, and then put your first finger to touch the bottom of the ukulele's neck. And this time around, our thumb is going to be almost at the top, right? So it's not hunched over, it's not hanging over, but it's almost at the top of the body. And that's it. So with this form, check this out. You can easily play anything out from there, right? If we just play basic, licks out of C, I can put all of the support of the neck on my index finger. Right? And I don't have to worry about holding it. Okay, so again, let's um, talk about the difference with form one and two. So for example, let's say you're playing some kind of walk down, right, where we're just going three, two, one, zero, and I'm just finger picking those three strings. I could probably use form one for this which is that big U-shaped gap. So you can watch how it goes. Right? But if I'm going to actually play a lick out of it, I can use form two, where my index finger is going to hold that neck up. Right? And that lick looks like... So what you can take away really from this lesson is that if you're playing something that actually involves you moving throughout the neck and playing single notes, then you can use form two, which helps hold the neck up. If you're playing something that involves a bit of a stretch chord, kind of like we did in La Bamba, then you can use form one, right? Or if you're doing some kind of finger picking where it's not too hard, you know, say I go seven, Five, three, two, and then open, right? I can keep that uh, first form with the U-shaped gap. So for bar chords or anything where it's kind of like an easier finger picking, it's going to be shape one or anything with the stretch chord, it'll be shape one. Anything that involves you playing complex licks like the one we've been demoing uh, throughout this lesson, you can use shape two. The same thing with bar chords. Bar chords are all the same as shape one. The only difference is that you're going to be barring, of course. Right? But it's the same concept. Okay? So one thing that I would work on, um, especially with bar chords, because that's usually trickiest with most people, is um, make sure you have an equal amount of pressure right, with the back of your thumb and pushing forward with your index finger. So if you've ever struggled with bar chords, probably the best thing to do is not to actually make one, but just bar a fret. Like I'm taking the second fret and I can pick every note, right? Because all a bar chord, if you think about it, is just getting finger strength, but it's also the form. So now we know the form. So all you have to work on is finger strength, which is just having enough strength to push flat so that everything rings out nice and clear. And that actually ties in, say we, let's go back to that D7. So if you're playing some kind of song with this chord in it or any bar chord, 
one way to practice to make sure you have it right is just to make the chord and pick every single note, right? If it doesn't ring out, then you know you have something to work on. For example, let's say my third string doesn't ring out or my second. So to fix this, I'll know that I'll have to push down harder with my index finger. Okay, so bar chords just takes a little bit of time to get down, but once you get it, you know, it's something you don't really have to work on too much, right? So I think if we kind of summarize what we've talked about today, um, this left-hand form is super important for getting more efficient and more effective practice out of your playing. Right? So a lot of times people always put importance on my finger should be on fingertip or what I'm doing with my uh, fingers, you know, am I on the right fret? While all that's important, it's also important to keep an eye on what you're doing with your left hand behind the neck too, right? So let's talk real quick before we wrap up things you shouldn't do when you're playing. You should never remove your thumb from the back of the neck, okay? That's the first thing. So if you're ever playing something and your hand comes off like this, that's really bad. Um, another thing you should never do is really hug the neck, right? So check it out. If I hug the neck and I'm just gonna play something, You can already tell that my mobility on my left hand is super jeopardized, right? If I hug the neck, I can't really move my fingers very well. Now, if I don't hug the neck and I'm doing kind of like a form two, I have a lot more mobility with what I'm playing. Right? So try not to hug the neck, okay? And remember, don't remove the thumb from the back of the neck, okay? And then one last thing, too, that I notice a lot. When you're moving around, for example, we'll go back to La Bamba. I see a lot of people, when they're jumping chords like that, they'll have a tendency to take their right hand and hold the bottom of the ukulele's neck, right? So, for example... So they're holding the bottom of the neck, right, while they move to an F chord, right? So I'm going from this higher C to an F chord. So this is what the whole lesson was about. It was about learning how to hold this ukulele properly so that you don't have to do something like that. You don't have to grab the bottom of the body to move when you have to go from here all the way down there, right? So from here, I'm going to do form one. Right, and to form one for all of these. Okay? So it really, this lesson really helps you with jumping around and it helps you to play more efficient. Um, and this can be applied to all aspects of your playing, you know, from playing technique to soloing to playing complete songs all the way through. Um, hopefully you guys gathered a few ideas of... Uh, how to fix any left hand issues you have. Um, so I know I, I kind of rambled on about all of these forms. Check out the um, technique and theory 101 lesson that I wrote, proper left hand ukulele form. It basically summarizes everything I talked about here in a very structured manner where everything has photographs and it's written out. So, you know, read through that and if you, um, need to go over anything again you guys can always re-watch this lesson you know to see more close-ups of your hand shapes and everything so i hope this lesson helped you guys um let me know what you think send me an email and i'll see you guys in our next live lesson for episode three